There's a war brewing in the jungle, and it's time to see if Mowgli can win it. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into adjustable bites to help you understand. And then I read it dramatically back to you, all alterations, to the panels, text, and images, hard to prevent copyright problems, and all art. It's owned by its respective companies. At the end of our last book, the tribes of the jungle were getting ready for another great war. Mowgli was cast out from the wolf tribe, Bolu had become the new leader of the bear tribe, and Louie had begun to lead the primates out on a conquest. But then, Louie watched as Ka began to eat one of his tribe, so he figured maybe today isn't the day the Bandar conquered the jungle. Even Khan and Bowami, now outcasts, have resorted to living among the scavengers in the scavenger territory to survive. But there is something else, something that shook the entire island. Mowgli now traveling with Bagheera asks what could have been done, and Bagheera tells her that he's not sure, but he does know who will know. He takes Mowgli to Kipling's Reach, a place where a tribe stays that has become solitary, not wanting to be a part of the jungle wars. This tribe is very elusive, and as elusive as they are, they are also wise. If they do not want you to see them, they will not be seen. Only those with a keen eye can find them. Luckily, Mowgli may have found them. Back at the Bandar Log, the ship that the primates uses as their home, Louis tries to figure out how to take over the jungle, but Dewan just sits there singing. Louis asks him what the song is, and then a member of the Tavi tribe appears and states that he's singing the song of their tribe, how the Tavi managed to defeat the great Ka, forcing him to retreat. Louis goes to check if that song is accurate, and when he gets to the Tavi fields, he sees that they are clear and the Tavi are out. But that's when something else catches his eye, Achille, the human that sided with the Tavi. Back at Kipling's Reach, Mowgli tries talking to the sloths to find out what is happening on the island. The sloth begins to speak very slowly, telling them that the island is tired of war. But as he does, the volcano behind them begins to erupt! As Mowgli and Bagheera watch, the sloth begins to tell her that this is the natural way of things. When she first came here, she stopped the war, and now it's coming again, and it is within her power to stop it. The lava begins to flow down the mountain, and Bagheera tells Mowgli that they need to leave, but the sloth continues to talk, telling Mowgli that she can save the island, and in order to do so, she will need to unite the tribes. Mowgli tries to reach out to the sloths, but they have accepted their fate. They have accepted the fate of the island, and they sit there as the lava begins to cover them, and they burst into flames. Mowgli can't believe what she is seeing. Elsewhere on the island, the tigers and the elephants are still at war, but during their fight, Gatil begins to run down Rada, and Hathi knocks Gatil away, throwing a tree trunk at him. Then Hathi goes to check on his father, but it's too late. The wounds that Gatil gave him are too deep, and he soon passes. Gatil begins to taunt Hathi, telling him to wait until he gets free. But before he can finish talking, Hathi rams his tusk through his skull, and then he throws him off, telling him that every tiger will die. Back with Mowgli, her and Bagheera make their way to Achille to tell her what the sloths had said. And Mowgli explains that she will need to unite all of the tribes. But before long, Dewan appears, knocking Mowgli down. And then before she can do anything, Dewan grabs Achille and escapes into the woods. When she wakes up, she hears Louie talking about how Achille shouldn't sleep on their big day. The tribes will need to be united if they're to defeat Ka. He then takes his earring, bending it into a ring, and he asks her if she will do him the honor of being his bride, with Dewan squashing her face and responding for her. He tells Louie, pretending to be Achille, yes, and it's settled. Achille begins to look around, and she finds herself tied up in all of the primates dancing for the soon-to-be royal wedding! Mowgli and Bagheera and the rest of the Tavi tribe begin to sneak up close to Bandar Log, and Bagheera warns them that they need to tread lightly. They don't want to disturb the mighty Ka. But Mowgli looks over to see a gazelle herd on its way and figures that maybe they should do the complete opposite and run for it. Inside the log, Louie begins to introduce Achille, the new queen of the Bandar. But soon, they begin to hear the same rumble of the herd stampeding as well. And outside, Mowgli has decided to take over the herd by riding on the stampede. And she begins to charge the stampede into the ship, wrecking everything. And behind all of this, Shere Khan and Bowami are watching. Breaking a hole into the ship caused Ka to begin attacking, trying to eat the primates. But during this, the gazelle that Mowgli was riding ends up throwing her to the ground while the gazelle continues stampeding towards the boat. Seeing this, Bowami jumps in to protect her, and Shere Khan jumps into the middle of the entire mess, roaring at the gazelle, splitting their path. Inside the boat, Ka begins to eat the primates, and Achille tries to take the rope off that Louie used to bind their hands together. But soon, Ka begins to eat her, like full on eat her. Boy, he's a lot bigger than I remember. After not much time, Ka then begins to swallow Louie since he's also tied to Achille. Dewan watches and shouts for Louie. 
He then grabs a pair of daggers, jumps as high as he can, and gets as close to Ka's head as he can, and he stabs him in the stomach, sliding all the way down, ripping a hole into him. Achille and Louis fall out of the dead Ka's stomach, and while Louis begins to celebrate, Achille grabs one of the daggers that Dewan used to cut Ka, and she cuts herself free of Louis. She then points the knife down at Louis and tells him that if he ever tries to bind her again, he will have two armies to answer for. So says the Queen of the Tavi and the Bandar tribe. But outside, while Mowgli begins to relax and the bushes behind her, arms reach out and grab her and throw her into a nearby tree. She looks up to see the god of fire and fear standing over her, and as he clubs her, he throws a net around her. When Bawami notices that Mowgli is now missing, he sees the man taking Mowgli, and then the man jumps on a raft and begins to take her away. This doesn't stop Bawami, though, as he jumps into the water after her. The man continues to sail out as the day turns to night, but behind him, Bawami continues swimming up until he gets close enough to jump aboard the raft. Bawami begins trying to attack the man, but that's when the man hits Bawami with the oar, and the two begin to struggle over the weapon. Soon, Bawami stops, and he looks up to see a giant pirate ship, and the man takes this chance to knock Bawami out while he's looking up in amazement. Back on the island, everyone begins to climb down to the beach where Bawami jumped in, and Dewan begins to build a raft to follow. But behind him in the cave, they soon hear growls. And everyone turns to see Wantala, the wolf that cast Mowgli out of the wolf tribe, and the now fully grown pups. Wantala tells them that they need to leave. But Achille tells Wantala that Mowgli is in trouble and they need to go save her. Wantala begins to argue back, but that's when rocks begin to fall down around them, and the tigers and the elephants begin to fall from a ledge during their battle. With the tribes beginning to gather, Wantala tells the wolves that it's time for them to defend their territory. But Achille tells them no, and tells them what Mowgli said about unifying all of the tribes. As Dewan finishes up his raft, him and Shere Khan go to get Mowgli back while everyone else decides to try and resolve the tribal conflict. Back on the pirate ship, the man begins to explain that there is a reward for these kids, and Mowgli is worth a lot. But while the man and the captain begin to talk, Dewan and the rest catch up to the ship, and they begin to climb on board. Khan goes to free Mowgli and Bawami, but soon the pirates notice, and they begin to surround everyone. They all begin to fight off the pirates, but after Bawami swipes at the captain's face with his claws, the captain takes out his sword, and he stabs Bawami in the stomach, pushing him off the edge of the boat. Mowgli begins to scream, trying to go after him, but Dewan holds her back, and he pulls her off the boat for them to escape. As the four begin to sail back. Shere Khan tells Mowgli how he was unfair to Bawami, calling him a failed tiger. But it was because of him that they were able to escape. He then takes the claws that Bawami used and pushes them towards Mowgli, telling her that she has proven herself to be a brave warrior. She even bested him, and it would have pleased Bawami to know that she would wear it if he could not. As Dewan sails everyone back, the pirates are not waiting around. Mowgli is worth a ship's weight in gold, and they're not going to miss out on that. Back on the island, everyone begins to come to shore, while the tribes are fighting and killing each other. Then everyone stops as Shere Khan lets out a thundering roar. Mowgli tells everyone that they need to end this fighting. There is a greater threat that is coming to the island, and it is not the bleeding mountain. It is man. A large vessel is coming, and with it heavily armed men. The only way to defeat this threat is for them to fight side by side. So she asks everyone, all of the tribes, if they will fight together for this island that they call home. But before anyone can answer, a cannon fires from the ship, and it hits the land, knocking many of the animals away. Mowgli and everyone begin to charge at the pirates as they're trying to come on shore. However, behind everyone, Louis looks at what hit the tree that he was sitting in and remembers seeing those things before. Dewan and Louis go back to the pirate ship and they load up a cannon and they fire it. Some of the pirates look up and they ask, do the animals have cannons? And as it gets closer, they yell out, the animals do have cannons. While Dewan and Louis begin firing those cannons back, Mowgli continues to lead the assault on the pirates until she manages to kill their captain and drive the pirates back. But before they can celebrate their victory, out of the woods come the bear tribe, who have escaped the lava underground. One of the bears stands before Mowgli, telling her that the other tribes fear their wrath. But before he can even swing, Baloo runs in, knocking him over. The bear calls out to Baloo as his father, telling him that his love for the other tribes, more than his own tribe, ends now. He challenges Baloo for leadership of the bear tribe. Baloo tells him that his right to challenge him has been denied. He was already challenged by the man called Mowgli of the wolf tribe. But before Mowgli can ask Baloo what he's doing, Baloo begins to charge at Mowgli. He tells her that the only way that she can stop the bears is if she defeats their leader, making her their leader. Baloo continues to fight and he swings and Mowgli continues to dodge his attacks. He then corners her along the rock's edge and he tells her that he's tired. He's so very tired. Leading the bears has forced him to do things that he promised he would never do. His head then knocks her down and he says, please, there is no other way to quell the wrath of the bears. Mowgli thinks back to all of the times that the two of them used to play and Baloo goes on to state that she needs to save the tribes and once this is done, Go to the maw of Kipling's root. There's something he left for her. Baloo then guides the spear that she grabbed and points it to his chest, telling her that it's time to end this. He has grown 
so very tired. With one thrust, the spear goes into Baloo's chest, killing him. And as the bears watch, Mowgli stands and tells the bears that she won their stupid challenge. And now as their leader, leave. Go find territory on this island and make it their own. And never return. As time passed, Mowgli began to travel to where Baloo told her to go and look for what is waiting for her. It's there that she finds the rock that he marked. She moves it away and as she looks down, she begins to cry. It was the stuffed animal that she had when the animals originally found her. And she thinks back to what Mother Wolf told her when she asked about starting this great war. She told her that she didn't know, but there will always be a war, either for survival, for territory, or pride. The one thing that did matter was the quiet moments when there were no battles. But someday, there will be another war. There will always be another war. So until then, stretch these moments of peace as long as they can. And that concludes the Jungle Book Trilogy by Xenoscope. It leads on a rather sad note, but personally I loved this trilogy. And we're probably going to do more of these Xenoscope retellings of the original fairy tales that we all grew up knowing. I hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know down below what other fairy tales you want me to look for the Xenoscope retellings of. And I'll try to get them. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Comicstorian and Instagram at Comicstorian. And I'll see you guys next time right here.